Okay, let's talk about infrared images and how to interpret them. So this is a picture of me uh, with the FLIR 1 Pro, and I took this with a different FLIR camera. The, uh, the, it's the T1030SC, which is really nice. Um, but you see these colors here, and what do they mean, and, and how can we interpret that? So let's start with a really basic introduction to how an infrared camera works. This is my element in the oven. When you turn it on, it gets hot. And if you let it run for a while, it starts to glow. However, if you looked at it in an infrared camera right after you turned it on, you could see it in the infrared image. This is because stuff gives off light. And we call this black body radiation. The wavelength of light that it gives off is proportional to, depends on the temperature. Most of the time, the stuff that we see around us gives off light in a region that we can't detect, but it's in the infrared region. And this is what the camera does. It detects those lower temperature wavelengths and displays them. Okay, but then we have a problem because I can't see infrared wavelengths even if the camera does. We have to make a translation to this thing that we call false color. So here's two images of my dog. On the left, they're both infrared images. On the left is a grayscale image. In this image, uh, darker colors represent colder temperatures, uh, even though that's not always the temperature, uh, because we have to realize that we could be reflecting light too. Okay, but I'm going to still talk about uh, darker colors representing colder temperatures, lighter colors representing warmer temperatures. So you notice his eyes and his nose are, are white because they're hotter. If you move over to the other color image, this is a iron palette. It just uses a different range of colors to represent temperatures too. So darker colors would again be colder temperatures, and then the yellow brighter stuff would represent uh, higher temperatures. So they're the same image, just different ways represent, representing the, the pixel data of the infrared wavelengths. That's a false color. Okay, here's another picture. Uh, the one on the left is actually a real picture with visible light, uh, and the one on the right is an infrared picture of the same thing. This is right after I stuffed my truck, uh, and you can see the right wheel is hot, and you can see a little path on the ground, which you can't really see in the visible image. But what I want to show you is the scale on the right. On this, on the right, there is this scale from 82.2 on the bottom up to 129, and that gives you your color palette range. So that tells you if you look at the that it's a relationship between the color and the temperature, if you have the temperature measured correctly. Okay, because there's a lot of things that emissivity and reflections and stuff like that that it may not actually be the temperature. But if it were a temperature, that's what it would be. And so we get this range here. And that's important to realize that we can adjust that range so the color palette's not always the same for every picture. And that's what I want to show you. So here is uh, two cups. And these two cups are have water in them, but they're not the same temperature. If I take a picture with the infrared camera, it looks like this. So you'll notice the one on the left is a little bit colder than the one on the right. Uh, and in fact, you can look at the scale. It goes from 65.9 Fahrenheit. That's the coldest. And I, I know it's in Fahrenheit. I know that's kind of silly, but it is. Up to 73.2 Fahrenheit. And so you can see a distinct difference between these two cups. Okay, but what happens if I change that palette color range? Here is a video of the same two cups. Let's see what happens. So first, I'm going to bring a colder cup right next to it. Now notice that cold cup. I didn't change the color scale. So that color, that cup is way colder than 65.2 degrees Fahrenheit and it just appears black. I can't get any colder. And then I'm going to bring in something super hot. This is actually uh, close to boiling water and it's higher than the highest temperature. So it, you can't see any detail in these two objects. It's really hot and this really cold thing. Uh, so I, I'm limited in in what I can see. Uh, these are those same objects in the visual, visible range, but this is the picture I want to show you. On the left, I have the two cups by themselves, and they are this, they're different temperatures. And notice the palette color range from 67 to 79 Fahrenheit. When I bring in the two higher and lower temperature objects, I can adjust that range. So now it goes from 30, so dark purple, blue, black is 30 Fahrenheit, and hot, hot yellow is 166. 
So I can see more detail at a broader range, but now I can't really tell that the two cups are different temperatures because I've had to spread out that color palette and I only have so many colors to use. If I want to use them over a larger range, I can't see as much detail and difference in temperatures over some smaller range. Here's another example. This is my uh, refrigerator. Let me open the refrigerator and I set the, the color palette to be constant. I open the fridge and you can see inside the fridge and there I put a warm bottle of water in there actually room temperature. You can see stuff, right? You can see di slight differences in temperature. Now when I open the freezer, nothing. You can see nothing because all that stuff is below the bottom level of the temperature scale and it just looks black. Okay, how about another example? This is a, a student that came in and uh, we were looking at how he breathes in his mask shows but I adjust the palette I don't really want to see I want to be able to see the changes in temperature in the in the face mask I don't want to see the stuff in the background so I adjust the temperature so that I don't really care about the background stuff if it's colder he's much hotter than the background so I want to increase the temperature uh, range so that I can see the details that I want okay here is a uh, one final image and this is just my personal preference here is the same parking lot in infrared and both are in infrared but one is the gray scale on the right and the other was iron palette which one is better okay which one can you get more details from sometimes i like the iron i mean the gray scale but i usually use the iron you'll notice that you actually get more detail because it's not only just a different range in colors but you have a different brightness of the different colors. So you can actually see a little bit more detail, I believe, with the iron gray uh, color palette. There are other color palettes you could use too, but I like iron the best. Um, it just feels the most natural to me, which is, that's really silly to say since it's all infrared, it's not natural. Uh, you, I just feel like you can see more detail and see more stuff. The other one actually looks like a black and white picture, but it's not a black and white picture. It's an infrared picture. Okay, so that's your introduction to false colors in infrared images.